Hey there, internet van lovers, travelers, and builders. Behind me is my 1998 Coachman Starflight, which I've aptly named Starflight. This van has undergone a complete transformation from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive. I've gutted the interior. I've rehabbed the exterior. Anything I could get my hands on has been rebuilt. This van truly does have a new lease on life. The purpose of this video was to document some of the key features of the van in order to create a directory for me when folks ask questions about it. The Instagram account for Starflight, which is auxbuilt, A-U-X underscore B-U-I-L-T, has generated a lot of questions from fellow builders and Econoline owners, so I thought, hey, let's do a walk around van tour video. That way I have something to reference when asked about products, parts, and decisions I made during the process. In the description below, you'll find time-coded notes that will help you jump to the right spot in case you're in a hurry. I built this van out of the desire to explore, but also as a creative outlet, as a hobbyist and a builder. If I can help others get closer to their goals quicker, well, mission accomplished. This van is extremely capable and it's well equipped. It's taken me anywhere and everywhere I wanna go. I'm extremely happy to share this info with you. I hope it's helpful. Let's start with the outside. All right, the most commonly thing asked about Starflight is the paint job. It is Raptor Liner by the company called u -Pole. The paint color is called Quicksand, which is a Toyota color we see on Tacomas nowadays. The paint code is 4V6. On the wheel wells and the rocker panels, we did traditional black Raptor Liner. It's the black that comes out of the factory when you buy a Raptor Liner kit that's the non-tintable version. This is the black that comes with it. We also Raptor Liner the grill, the hood cowl, and the roof rack with black Raptor Liner, as well as the rear bumper. At the front of the van, we have a great set of eyes, custom headlights by Vantage Optics. They make some really cool things. They have some headlight mounts for Ford Econoline vans and some other products that uh, are custom and hard to find. The front bumper is the Luminess. It also has a 12,000 pound worn winch. So when it comes to four wheel drive vans, the Ford Econoline is a great chassis to choose because of the multitude of companies that make four wheel drive conversion kits. Starflight sports a U-joint off-road six inch lift, the Dana 60 front axle, the SSBC big brake kit, and a NP271 transfer case. The leaf springs are custom made for the weight of the vehicle. And in the back of the vehicle, we added a Firestone Air Command 3 airbag system to help the rear. The airbag system helps in highway driving scenarios, as well if you're loaded up and you wanted a little extra suspension help. Both the front and the rear axle, as well as the frame and any other components we get our hands on, have been hand sanded and we applied POR15 paint, which gives it a really nice finish, as well as a protective coating. The axles have been re-geared to 513 in order to compensate for the size of the tire and the air drag this van has. The front axle, the suspension, the transfer case, and the transmission have all been replaced when the full dry was installed about 20,000 miles ago. Tire choice is always a big discussion for these vans. We chose the Rodian MTX by Nexon because it has a weight capacity of 3,970 pounds per tire. The 37 inch Nexons are wrapped around 20 inch wheels in the front and the rear. So the plan in rehabbing a vehicle that's 22 years old was to replace or upgrade as many components as possible. That included the mirrors. These are the 13 inch Velvac mirrors and we sprayed them with black Raptor liner as well. One thing I like to point out when I tell people about Raptor liner is when you have these seams and they're all really old and all the caulking's cracked, it's important to gouge out all that material and then replace that material before you apply the Raptor liner. The product we use to replace all of these seams and recaulk these seals is called Sikaflex and they make a multitude of products. The particular product we use was Sikaflex 221. Moving down the van, we have a 30 amp shore power hookup, which is a smart plug version. We also have an additional air hose hookup from the Air Command compressor, which is nice for filling tires and or any inflatable rafts that you might have. City water hookup, fuel, and a nice storage container with a light. Coming around the back of the Starflight, a custom bumper that I made out of 316 steel. 
and I inset a step here to be the first step going up onto the ladder. Also recessed a backup light and extra turn signal. We also have a class three hitch and I recessed a backup camera right above that in the bumper. On the left side, we have a ladder. It goes all the way up to the top. On the right side, I just built this cage and just a general cargo attachment point for kayak, snowboards, bike rack, whatever you can imagine. So these plates are actually a sandwich construction and there's a backer plate on the inside of the vehicle and bolts going all the way through. The rear swing arm has two aluminum boxes that are stacked on top of each other. Gives you a lot of good extra cargo space and they're feather light. It's mounted on the swing arm and attached by the simple clasp over here, which allows it to open up and give you a pass through to inside the vehicle. I added a hinge and two gas shocks to the rear emergency window, which allowed it to open up. Just above that, I added a floodlight for security, as well as tail lights and reverse lights on the vehicle. In fact, every light on this vehicle has been upgraded to LED and replaced. One of my favorite items and extremely convenient items on this van is this rear shower. So nice to have this out in the open to rinse off at the end of the day. Up on top of the Star Flight, we have a custom made aluminum roof rack that's 16 feet by six feet wide that we made in house. The roof rack's spacious enough to give us space for three 100 watt solar panels, a high lift jack, our spare tire, the Penguin 2 air top AC unit, our ax and our shovel, as well as two roto tracks if we get stuck. I wanted to keep the spare tire on the Starflight on the roof versus the other option, which would be on the rear bumper. I wanted to keep that weight forward of the axle. And one of the challenges is getting a 37 inch tire up and down. So I designed a custom hoist system to allow me to do just that. Some features on the passenger side of the vehicle is access to plumbing. We have an overhead floodlight that rests underneath the awning, a porch light that has an amber glow, as well as an outdoor radio. Heck brothers, ladies and gentlemen. Starflight has a Fiamma F45 10 foot awning. And there's two options as far as fixing the awning. One is to the ground with the legs. You can stake them into the dirt or whatever surface you're on. The other is actually running it back to the vehicle on the vehicle mounts. Now, as you can see, the entire exterior of the van has been remodeled, upgraded, replaced. We definitely didn't stop there. Let's check out the inside and see what we did. I put a ton of blood, sweat, and tears into the outside of the van. It was very important for me to make sure that the inside of Starflight encapsulated my vision and had a quality and return on investment that the outside provided. That's why I chose to work with EJ from Johnson's Custom Van Solutions, an outfit out of San Diego, because I knew he was gonna be able to provide the work to match the vision I had for the interior. Obviously, the steps of a van are the most trafficked area. As you come into Starflight, I installed these carpets here that are quick release, removable carpets that allow you to take the carpet off and shake them off. And on the second step underneath that carpet, we have this nice little shoe storage area. 
up in the front of the van, down at the floor, I started with a layer of kill mat, a half inch of insulation, and then a rugged rubber coin flooring to top it off. Long journeys definitely call for comfy rides and we reupholstered the seats with a two-tone vinyl. And the side pillars and headliner, as well as the visors, were reupholstered with a nice gray suede. Having a big van like this, going on long road trips, definitely calls for front and rear backup cameras and a good audio system. We have JL six and a half inch speakers, a 10 inch sub, and two different amps. And once you're parked and on location, it takes two seconds to get Starflight into chill mode with these easy deploy front curtains and a passenger seat that swivels to become part of the living space. I wanted the four wheel drive shifter in the Starflight to be removable so it was easier to get from the back of the vehicle into the driver's seat. And the guys at U-Joint did that for me. They cut this off and put this collar on which allows me to remove it from the floor. The plan was always to gut this van and redo it with the most up-to-date and cutting-edge electronics and components that are available in the RV market today. Um, it was a 22-year-old van, so I wanted to start fresh. Up front we have a cab over bunk. It's one of the main features of the van and it was very important when designing this van because I had four seatbelts. I wanted it to make it so that you could have two children and two adults sleep in the van comfortably. It's not the most spacious bed, but it will sleep two toddlers, two young kids, and I've had a couple of my adult friends sleep up there as well. The bamboo panel comes down. And just lowers down. There's a recessed light overhead, as well as a reading light and night light in the corner. There's a four inch pad upholstered with ultra leather. This is the insert piece for the, the bed in the back. So if you're not gonna have someone sleep up here, it's also a really nice place to store dry food or any other extra clothing, bedding, or cargo that you need to take. Also inside here, I found it to be a good place to store the turn rod for the exterior awning. A lot of people ask how this is supported. I kinda wanted to just show it here. It comes down on these walnut side beams. And I've been asked about its weight capacity and strength. And just for an example, I weigh close to 200 pounds. And it holds me just fine. The ceiling's made out of black walnut. All the cabinetry and woodworking trim is made out of bamboo. The countertops are made out of rich light which is a really dense paper product and they make a multitude of colors. I really, really love the product and uh, would definitely recommend it and use it again in the future. The walls in the Starflight were fiberglass. They were just a white fiberglass. So it was a nice base to start with and we just wrapped them with this uh, German textured vinyl that's really rugged and adds a nice little bit of a accent color to the van. The attention to detail really matters. This plastic trim ring that comes with the fan was discarded and EJ made a nice bamboo trim for this fan in here in the galley. Reusing the cutout from the sink, it was some extra material and it made a nice little flat floating shelf. And for the flooring, we chose a cork laminate. The cork has a natural sound deadening property and also kind of adds to the insulation R value of the van. The passenger seat here is a Ford Transit two up seat. The seat's sitting on a metal frame that we welded here and it is bolted to the frame of the vehicle in four locations. Underneath the seat is the heart of the electronic systems for this van. At the core of it, we have a Victron Energy 3000 watt inverter charger. Because we have an induction cooktop in here, we needed plenty of power. And for that, we have 500 amp hours of lithium ion batteries by Battleborn and that does the job. On the roof, we have 300 watts of solar connected to an MPPT solar charge controller. For controls, we have the Victron Energy Color GX as well as an S-Pod. There are a multitude of switches throughout the van. However, we did concentrate some of the important ones here on the S-Pod unit. We have the cabin lights, 
the under cab lights, the water pump, the flood on the awning side, the driver porch light, uh, our overhead main fan in the galley, the accent tow kick lighting, and the exterior step light. The S-Pod will let you set any device connected to it to be dimmable. However, I wouldn't recommend you dimming anything that has a constant motor, like your fan. But it's a nice little feature to have for the cabin lights or the under cab lights or anything outside. On the passenger side near the front, we just have this little weather control and it shows you the humidity, forecast, and temperature. It also comes with these little wireless sensors, two of them actually. Um, it's handy to keep under the bed or in an area that's prone to freezing or if you want to keep an eye on humidity in a certain area of the van. At the heart of the kitchen, we have a true induction cooktop, a dual burner, sitting on top of the previously mentioned black rich light. And we have a 14 inch by 18 inch stainless sink, a nice retracting wand faucet, and a integrated soap dispenser. Because the galley is compact, uh, we really wanted to make use of the most space possible, so we added this lagoon table on the side of the bed. It really does help a lot with cook prep, and it just stows away when you're in bed mode over here. This lagoon table really is dual purpose. We added a second mount on the side of the Ford Transit seat that acts as uh, an office area if you want to work on your laptop. Underneath the sink in the galley, we have a fire extinguisher, a nice little basket for a couple of different cleaners, spray bottles. We also have a four-stage water filter by iSpring Water Systems that really does make a difference when it comes to the drinking water. Opposite the galley, we have a nice built-in unit that houses the Isotherm Cruise 130 fridge freezer, which is a 12-volt unit, uh, as well as some overhead space, hang closet, ample drawer space for storage of clothing and other items, as well as a nice deep drawer for the pots and pans. And inside the closet, there was a perfect little spot to mount the fire stick, which is the extension for the CB antenna. No shortage of storage space in this van. We have a full 12 foot header, as well as a additional three foot overhead cabinet in the rear. So there's plenty of space for all your clothing and additional items all on gas shocks slam latches underneath the overhead cabinets we have the bed area it's a great place to hang out during the day when it's in couch mode surrounded by panoramic views of the windows it's got full wrap curtains and the rear window opens up it's on two gas shocks and it opens out um, the L configuration really works in this van. I don't really know any other platform that would work with the two up passenger seat, actually having four seat belted seats and a full size shower and wet bath. A platform bed would take up too much space. This is a six inch memory foam mattress. Uh, the bed is six foot one inch long from the back of the van to the galley and it's four foot six inch wide. The bed converts from couch mode into bed mode in a really simple process. This section here is mounted on dual 500 pound drawer slides. All you have to do is give it a pull and it frees the magnet off the wall. And this section slides right out, stops here. There's an insert that I leave right underneath the mattress that fills in that space. And then the section that was stashed in the overhead compartment just fills in the insert here. Underneath the bed, we have a storage area. It's where we house the six gallon electric water heater, as well as our 46 gallon fresh water tank. On the fresh water tank, there's a fill that goes to the exterior of the vehicle. And I installed this simple on off so that you don't get any splash back. With the primary bed pad removed, there's some additional storage underneath. And when the bed pad is above, there's easy access underneath the bed from this hatch here. This also goes all the way through to the outside. If you wanted to put in long skis or snowboard, this is a good spot for that as well. Conveniently next to the bedside, we have the Wabasto cabin heater, which sips gasoline straight out of the fuel cell. Below that, we have some USB charging, 220 volt outlets that run off the inverter, the bathroom light, 
and also a rear light control for a floodlight in the back of the vehicle. Starflight has a nice wet bath. It has a ceiling fan as well as an overhead light and a composting toilet as well as a refinished white Raptor linered floor. Outside of the bathroom is a nice little vanity area with a mirror and a shelf as well as a countertop and a couple hooks for accessories and towels. That's gonna wrap up the van tour video for Starflight. I hope you love her as much as I do. I spent about 80% of 2020 in this van. I did between 15 and 17,000 miles. And after putting significant amount of time in, I really don't have many decisions that I would have done differently. However, if you're in the middle of building a van and you're gonna undertake that and you have questions, please feel free to reach out. The best place for that is in the comments below rather than DM me on Instagram. That way we can build sort of an FAQ uh, directory of sorts of questions. And if someone else has already asked me that question, you might find it answered already in the comments below. If you're ever planning on a trip, holler at your boy. I'm always down. I'll see you on the road. Thanks for watching.